Well, Skylum certainly aren't resting on their laurels. And in this video, I have a preview of yet another tool that will be coming out for Luminar Neo within the next couple of weeks. When I heard that we were getting a neon and glow tool for Luminar Neo, I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical because I thought, how practical is that actually going to be? It's probably going to be a little bit gimmicky. Well, I'm pleased to say after playing around with the beta version now for a couple of hours, I've already found some pretty practical uses for it, as well as the very fun aspects that come with this tool as well. So let me show you how we use the tool discuss a few applications for it, and I'll also let you know what I like and what I don't like at the end as well. Let's get into it. As I scroll through the catalog view here, you can see already just in a couple of hours of having this tool, I've had great fun playing around with it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of diversity in subject matter. So to demonstrate the tool, I'm just gonna reset this photo to the original. I took this quite a few years ago of my daughter. So unsurprisingly, the new tool exists in the creative section of Luminar Neo. So if you expand that, you'll find neon and glow. And the tool is split into the two halves, neon and glow. And then we have a mask for the tool, just like we do for any other tool inside Luminar Neo. To activate the effect, all we need to do is grab the amount slider and push that up. And what we see here is the neon tool with the default settings. So let's break down what's going on here and have a look at the sliders. So I can control the thickness of this glow amount. That's with that slider there. And the next slider is the indent. And this refers to how tightly the neon glow is actually applied to your subject. So the further we push that up, the further away that glow is gonna get from your subject. And so far I have found bringing the indent down nice and tight gives the best results. Below these basic controls, we have a style section, and that allows us to control the spread of the glow. So we can increase that and get a more intense look, or we can drop it right back. So how far you push that, obviously that's entirely up to you. And next we have an atmosphere slider that allows the style of our glow just to bleed off into the scene. So far from my vast experience with this tool, I found that pushing the spread and the atmosphere sliders higher actually gives a better result. And this is because usually when you apply an effect, you don't want it to be really abrupt. The smoother you can make that transition from the effect into the environment of the photo as a whole, the more believable the effect is going to be. So that's the reason I like pushing those up. So the next two sliders are more about the color. And we can grab this hue slider here and just move through the different spectrum available to us until we find a hue that we like. And this whiteness slider is pretty useful too because it literally just talks into the core color of the glow itself. So if we double click that to reset that, you can see that's the default value. If I take it down to the left, basically we are nullifying the white glowing halo around our subject and we can just increase that and get that to a point where we like it. Now you may have noticed down here that there's this little discrepancy by her shoe. Now why is that? Well, it's because all of this effect is based off of a mask that is created inside the tool itself. And now I've closed that down, it's jumped into the edit section, as do all tools once we've finished applying them. So we can come in here and you need to understand the difference between two masks that exist here. The masking section here is the one that you'll be familiar with, and that refers to masking in the tool as a whole. So if I just put a squiggle through here, you will see that I can actually control where that tool is applied. And if I come and paint in down by her shoe where that little anomaly was, we can see that that is still there. So that's our standard masking that's available to us. That is not the mask I'm wanting to show you. Within Neon itself and with Glow, we have the option to refine object. Currently we don't see anything, but if I come over here and click on our image, you can actually see the AI mask that's being generated to control the glow effect. And this is a hard thing to definitively call because we've had so many updates to Luminar Neo over such a short period. However, I'm pretty sure that the AI that's driving the masks for defining human form, hair and all of that, I'm pretty sure that they're a lot more accurate now than they were when this technology was first introduced. And that's a good thing but it's still not perfect. And if we zoom into the shoe here, we can see why the AI has just picked up this little anomaly here and thought that should be part of our mask. So all we need to do is just erase that. So I've switched from the draw tool to the erase tool, come over and I've just erased that part of the mask. And by doing that, we now have a much more accurate glow just around my daughter. Okay, so that's the neon feature in a nutshell. So here's our before, here is our after, before, and after a big transformation with a single tool. But what about the glow effect? Let's have a look at that. 
In fact, I'll show you the main sliders on another example, but before I move on, you can see we've got this drop down here for sparkles, and that might actually lend itself quite well to this magical little princess scene. You can see that if I push that up, we start to see some sparkles around our subject. We can push the spread up slightly as well, and just so it stands out a little better, I'm just gonna reduce the amount of the neon effect. So now if I toggle to the original and release, you can see that we've got the neon glow plus some twinkly sparkles around my daughter. So thanks to that AI masking, it's super easy to apply, a lot of fun as well. So now we've covered that, let's now have a look at the glow effect. I'm gonna revert this one to the original. It has been pre-edited. This was a little promo piece I did 10 years ago. Shoot to thrill, ooh, okay. So let's have a little look at this, jump into the edit section again, come down into the creative, neon and glow and this time let's bypass neon and jump straight to the glow effect same as before we want to grab the amount slider and just start cranking that up so we actually see the effect and if you don't see anything changing straight away don't worry about it it's just a case of luminar neo creating the mask and depending on the complexity of the subject it's masking that will determine how long it takes to create the mask and you can see that i'm just painting over some little areas there where it didn't quite nail it and if it's created mask areas that you don't want, like between my legs here, it's actually added a bit of masking. So I can just switch over to the erase tool and refine my object mask. Okay, so let's break down the glow tool. Now, just like the neon and glow tool itself that is split into two parts, the neon and glow components, the glow tool is also split into two parts. We have the outer glow and the inner glow. So currently I have zero amount for my inner glow and 100 for my outer glow. So if I were to bring down the outer glow, switch over to inner glow and start cranking that up, you can see that we've altered the color of me because I'm the area that's selected. So at first glance, before we've refined anything, you might not really see much of a practical application for being able to bump up the inner glow as it were. However, I've already found a couple of useful reasons why you might want to play around with that. But for now, let's focus on the outer glow, which I have found to be more useful. I'll put the amount to its maximum just so that we can more clearly see the changes that are going on as I manipulate these sliders. So just like with any of Luminar's tools, we can work with a sense of subtlety or we can be really obnoxious and go full on with our effects. We've got the ability to change the hue just like before. So we could go for something that's more complimentary and go for a kind of bluey look like this. And just like with the neon, we have the ability to grab the whiteness slider, which I think of rather than brightening up the effect, rather it's actually desaturating the effect. So if I take it all the way to the left, we see a fully saturated version of this glow tool. Whereas if we start pushing it to the right, we can see that we start to desaturate that overall hue. And just as I showed you previously, obviously we can put sparkles into the effect as well. But when and where you add sparkles to the glow effect really should be consistent with the type of imagery you're applying it to. Me with my cameras, trying to look cool, not so much. My daughter thinking she's cute doing ballet. Yeah, maybe that is a good option for it. Okay, let's have a quick toggle of our before and our after, and you can see that is quite a transformation. It's probably a little excessive with the amount slider set to 100, but obviously it's totally up to you to fine tune the look of these effects. Something like that is more subtle. And of course we can use Luminar's other tools to help tie things in. So for example, now we've got more blues than in the original, we can come into the toning section and say, hey, in the shadows, I think it would benefit from us bringing in some more blues into those shadows, so before and after. Okay, let's jump back to the catalog and how about we do a more customized look. So if you wanna get really clever with it, you can work on little laser effects, things like this. And if you'd like me to show you how I did those laser effects, just write laser in the video description and I'll do that. But for now, let's have a look how I've created this. I just press the backslash key so you can see my original photo of this Corvette and then release. And this has been 100% created with the neon and glow effect. And you can see that I've stacked various versions of it. So I'm just gonna come over and discard those edits. So with no edits applied, let's see if we can build that effect up. The first thing I want to do is actually emulate the fact that these lights are on. And if they were on, I feel like we'd be getting a little bit of a red glow going on around the back of the car. So that's easy enough to do with the neon and glow tool. I'm gonna to come to the glow. I'm gonna select inner this time. 
And if I crank that amount to 100, we can see what's going on. We can see exactly where that mask is. It's turning everything in the car yellow. Obviously not what I want just yet, but that's okay. We'll give it a red hue, increase that saturation by bringing the whiteness down. And I'm just gonna refine the object because the mask just missed a little bit through here. And now I know what the current tool looks like. I'm gonna to come to the masking section itself, which is controlling this overall look. And I can just brush this in over the lights themselves. So I'm just clicking once over each light. So already we've got our before and after, we've got a kind of glow effect going on. Now, if those lights were on, we'd be getting a little bit of red reflecting down here on the floor. And so to enable me to do that, I'm just gonna close that neon and glow tool down, open a brand new instance of the tool. And now anything I create here is completely separate to what we did before. I don't wanna be applying any neon effect, but you can see from that that it has already refound the shape of the car. And this time I'm gonna to come to the outer section because that's gonna create a glow on the outside of the car. I'm gonna start increasing the amount and you can see how this effect could well be used to create a spotlight effect behind our subjects. But in this case, I'm gonna use it to create that red glow on the floor. Currently the whiteness is quite high, so I'm gonna bring that down so we can saturate things. And I really don't care what the rest of the photo is looking like. All I'm worrying about is this little area down here on the floor below that back right wheel. So I'm gonna expand the size of this so I'm getting a nice bleed of color. And again, I'm gonna come to my masking option, just the standard masking. And with a low strength, I'm just gonna start brushing that over this area here. And I can just switch to my erase tool, increase the size of the brush and just take it away from where I don't want and also create a softer transition. Certainly not finessed, but for the sake of the video, I'll press on. Again, we'll close that version of the tool down, open a brand new one, and this time we're gonna use the neon tool to create the light streaks. So if I grab the amount and push that up, you can again see that the object selected is clearly the car. So I need to remove that so that we can create a custom mask for our car. So I want to erase that. Currently my strength was still at 10, so I'll push that all the way to 100, do a quick pass over the car, and that will get rid of our neon effect. Now I'm free to come in and draw the effect as I want it. So I'm gonna bring the size of my brush right down and I'm gonna click once on the light and I'm gonna follow the perspective of the car off and to the right of the frame, something like this. And now I'll jump out of the refine object section and we can come in and just style this as we want it. So the first thing we want to do is bring the indent down so that it closely matches the shape of the light. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. We can then play with the thickness and decide whether we want a thin skinny white line there or something thicker, but the default of 25 is probably about right for this one. I'm gonna push the spread up higher so that we're getting more light bleed around the laser effect. And I'll bring the atmosphere up as well, just so that we're getting some of that coloration going through the photo itself as well. Now we wanna make sure that we are actually working with a red light, not a pinky one. At 360, that is a pure red. However, I am just gonna bring it down so that we're adding just a little touch of orange into it as well. Something like that. And we're gonna see more of that orangey effect, I'm sure, if we bring the whiteness down. Okay, let's toggle the before and the after, before and after. And so what if I want this light to bleed off towards the edge of the frame? Well, easy enough to do. I can do that with a linear gradient in the masking section, because that's gonna say, hey, I want 100% of this on the left-hand side of this gradient, where it's fully red at the moment, and we're just gonna taper that off towards the edge. So now if I go back to my tool, you can clearly see the effect of applying that mask. The tool is fully active here at the light and tapers off to the right-hand side. And now what I'd love to do is duplicate that tool and then move it over this light. But unfortunately, I'm not able to do that as yet. This is a beta, so that may change with the final release. But for now, I'm just gonna have to follow the same process that I did before and change my settings. I can't quite remember what I set them to before, but look, this is gonna be close enough. Now, perhaps that should be just a little bit less intense because it is further away. So I'll just dull that back by dropping the amount down. Let's have a look at our before. So I'll press the backslash key and release to see the after, before and after. So I hope these examples have whetted your appetite for this tool. And it's one of those great tools where the more you use it, the more your creative juices start flowing. So I'd love to know from you guys where you think this might be applicable to you and your photography, or do you think, nah, that's just not a tool I'm gonna to be using. If you're a Luminar Neo subscriber, obviously this will be released to you over the next couple of weeks. As I say, this is the beta version that I am using. 
If you own Luminar Neo outright and you want to get access to this and the other tools that Skylum are producing at the moment, then you would need their annual creative pass. I will put a link to that in the description below, also along with a discount if you do want to check it out. So in conclusion, pros and cons. For the pro side, I found this a very applicable tool, much more useful than I thought it was gonna be, and also it is so much fun to play around with. So they are the two things massively in its favor. And the cons, well, they're little things, but I would like to see the neon tool actually match perfectly where you draw the mask rather than going either side of it and then being pulled in by that indent. Because even if you drop the indent all the way down, it doesn't quite come down and match perfectly on that line. So when you're doing things like lasers, you have to do a little workaround that I can show you. Again, write lasers in the description if you are interested in seeing a video about that. Another thing to be mindful of that I mentioned is if your object that you're selecting and working with is particularly complex, it is gonna take a little while when you first move that slider before you see the effect applied because Luminar Neo needs to calculate that mask. So you might need a little bit of patience, particularly if your computer sucks. No, I don't mean that, it catches my computer out too. The third thing I wanna mention is the sparkles. There's something about the sparkles and the way they're applied on the screen that currently there are a few like dead areas within the sparkles. Um, I've overcome that by using the clone tool and patching that up, so no big drama, and I'm pretty sure that that will get fixed but it's something that I've noticed as a little minor bug at the moment. But like I say, it is a beta version, so I'm not judging too heavily just yet. Overall though, the tool itself, I'm really enjoying it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. You might wanna check out that video. If you haven't subscribed already, you can click the big AD button right there. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.